Okay, I guess we can start. Um, hi, my name is Tom Zanussi. I'm a software engineer at Intel. And um, today we're going to be talking about measuring and summarizing um, latencies using the trace event subsystem. <clears throat> um, for, I'll start off with a quick overview of trace events for uh, people who may not be that familiar with it. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, jump right into functionality that's implemented by a patch set, um, the inner event patch set. Um, that I posted upstream, uh, I think we're on version nine now, um, that implements um, basically inner event quantities and latency being the most important one of those. Um, I'll, I'll start with uh, uh, some basic latency calculations and what you can do with them. Um, and then I'll move on to um, latency histograms and uh, another new feature that this patch that implements, which is synthetic events, and how uh, th those basically enable the uh, latency histograms. Um, then I'll talk about um, basically object tracing, uh, 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 tracking objects uh, latencies um, using a couple examples, and then I'll, uh, I'll talk about latency, latency tracing in reference to uh, new, another new patch set um, that just went upstream recently. It has, it's, been posted, but it's not merged yet. Um, the um, Steve Ross says function events patch that. So, um, just a quick overview of trace events itself. Um, so Linux has a large uh, set of tra trace events. Um, these are just places in the kernel where it's it may be useful to um, log relevant information um, when execution hits those points. Um, and they're uh, called trace events, and they're they're hundreds of those, hundreds of them in the kernel at this point, thousand maybe, thousands, a couple thousand, okay. Um, so to, to make, to basically to make those manageable, they're grouped into subsystems. Um, sorry. Yeah, I was forced, I, I couldn't get my Linux laptop hooked up, so I'd use my Windows one, that's the work uh, updating in the middle of my presentation, but. Um, so anyway, yeah, so they're uh, grouped into subsystems uh, such as you know, things like networking, block, um, et cetera. Um, and those are contained in a, in a subdirectory under tracing events. Um, and then within each of those, in each, within each of those um, subsystem directories are um, the uh, uh, directory for each event, uh, are, are event, are directories for the events themselves, and one for each event. Um, and within those directories are a set of files um, that uh, describe and control that particular event. Um, so one, one of the, one of the uh, files, uh, one of those files is called a format file, and it's an exhaustive description of everything that gets logged um, uh, when, that, uh, when that event is logged in the form of um, a set of fields. Um, so by default, an, an event, uh, the, an event's data doesn't, doesn't go, uh, uh, doesn't go into a trace buffer, it doesn't get logged anywhere um, unless it's explicitly enabled. Um, and to do that, you use um, uh, one of the control files uh, associated with the event um, or the subsystem uh, called enable, and you basically just echo a one to that, that file. Um, and, and after that point, um, you're logging the events and you can go and look at the, um, the output um, at any time by reading the uh, trace file, uh, tracing, the, reading the trace buffer through this uh, tracing trace uh, slash trace file, um, and um, this is an this is an here here are a few examples of um, things that are actually logged. Uh, basically, one one record for each um, event, and then associated with the records, uh, each record you see the uh, the fields. Um, filled in uh, according to what was in the format file. So, um, so in addition to or instead of uh, logging things to, logging those events to the, the trace buffer, you can also um, send them to a histogram. And so essentially uh, that data will be aggregated in some way um, in, through a histogram. Um, the way to do that is through yet another, uh, yet another file um, associated with the event um, called the trigger file, and you, uh, to enable histogram, you send it a hist specification um, like, uh, like this line here. 
So, um, so in this case, uh, so you can think of the, the histogram as a, as, a, uh, as a hash table with key and associated values. And in the case of the, the um, uh, F-trace histograms, uh, the keys and the values are just uh, one or more of the, of the format of the fields described in the format file. Um, so in this, uh, uh, in this example, we have a histogram and the key is the, the process ID common PID, that's a value that um, every event has, uh, a field that every event has, and, um, and the values here are um, bytes of lock and hit count. Um, so you send that to the trigger, and then at any point after that, you can see um, the current state of the histogram. Um, it's constantly running, and you can look at it anytime you want. Um, and you do that by reading this, uh, another, yet another file called hist, and um, look at the output, and, then, and this is a, a typical output. Um, here we have a line, uh, uh, a line for each unique PID, and then associated with each one of those processes, we have uh, a running total of the number of bytes allocated um, by kmalloc on behalf of that process in this example. Um, so this is just... Uh, sort of a more graphical way of looking at the same thing, and I'm gonna use this, this kind of uh, diagram throughout the talk, so I'll explain it a little bit um, right now. Uh, so the, on the left-hand side is your standard uh, kernel user space layering diagram. You know, user space calls into the kernel, and the kernel calls the driver, and talks to the hardware, et cetera. Um, and on the right-hand side, um, there's just a, a piece of the kernel uh, uh, broken out, um, in this case, it's F-trace is the subsystem that we're talking about. So um, on the right-hand side, uh, um, we see the, uh, the trace buffer that, uh, associated with F-trace. Uh, that's where all the events go. And then um, uh, on, the left, on the left of that diagram, there are, um, those are the histograms. And um, those are just, these are just two, two representations of the same thing. They're the same histogram. Um, this is more of tabular form, and then this is, uh, just the same thing flipped on its side and um, the weights, given some weights for the, uh, the value of, the, of, of the, uh, what it contains. Um, so um, going back to the left-hand side, we see in this case we have uh, two, uh, two processes. They're probably making a system call, um, going into the kernel and coming back. And the dots, uh, the dots uh, in the middle of their execution are meant to represent the time when the points when they hit a trace point. So each one of them is hitting a trace point, and um, you can see that the the, uh, uh, the trace event data goes into the F trace buffer, um, and it's also uh, sent to a histogram. And um, you can see for uh, for every for each each process gets its only slot in the histogram, and that's where the uh, data is aggregated for that process. Um, okay, so, so everything I've described so far is already in the kernel. Um, you can go and play with the histograms. You can go and play with the trace events. Uh, it's all very well documented in uh, documentation slash trace. Um, what I'm going to talk about uh, here for, uh, henceforward is uh, uh, basically functionality implemented by the, the inner event patch set, um, so, uh, which covers latency as probably the most important quantity. And uh, by latency, I just mean uh, uh, just a quanti quantity derived from two events, one later in time than the other, and the time different time, difference in time stamps between those. Um, and uh, we can use, uh, to calculate a latency, we can actually make use of the histograms we already have. Um, and what the patch set, what the intervent patch set does, one of the things it does is uh, enable you to put variables on, uh, on, on the histogram so that you can save and retrieve very, uh, variables between events. Um, so here's an example. Um, I have two events, um, SCED waking and SCED switch. Uh, they're both keyed on the process ID. And in the first one, uh, we're, we're saving, basically when that event gets hit, we're saving the, common, the timestamp into a variable TS0. And then um, later on, when the SCED switch event comes along, uh, retrieving that timestamp and um, subtracting it from the current timestamp on that event, and then saving it into another variable um, on that trigger, uh, in this case, uh, waking latency. And that's just the latency uh, that we want. 
So graphically, it looks like this. Um, so you have a, a user space process uh, making a system call. Um, at some point, it hits the, uh, it hits the, uh, the trace point, um, logs its data into the trace buffer. You see the event there. And then um, it also sends it. It, 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 it also uh, uh, saves this timestamp variable in that slot associated with that process. Uh, then sometime later, sometime later, um, the SCAD switch event happens, um, and um, it saves. It, it basically has a timestamp that's associated with the same slot. Um, and uh, it, in addition, it sends its um, it, its uh, data to the, the trace buffer. Um, at this point, um, we have enough to do to do our latency to create a latency uh, out of those two things. We just subtract them, and we end up with. Um, our latency is still again associated with uh, with that process, um, and that's that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, yeah, and so so now we have a latency. Um, so what, what what do we do, what can we do with it at this point? Um, well, um, in uh, uh, in the case of a latency, one of the things most important things you can do with latency, or one of the things the most useful things to do is to actually um, figure out if, if it's the maximum latency you've seen so far. So that's what this, th these uh, icons are supposed to represent is we've got a latency, now we're feeding it into um, this thing called, call, I call a handler. Um, in this case, it's still supposed to re represent the, um, uh, basically a function that uh, compares the latency you're passing in uh, to the maximum we've seen so far. And um, if it's not larger, uh, do nothing. If it is, then do, this, do, do the action on the right. And in this case, the action is this piggy bank is meant to represent save. So essentially what it's saying is if, this, if we have a menu maximum, save some state um, associated with that maximum. Um, so in terms, of, in, certain, in terms of the triggers, it, uh, this is what it looks like. So we have, um, so here's, uh, this, well, all, all we're doing is adding this line here. And um, to the left of the dot is the handler and the right is the action. So in this case, the handler is saying, okay, uh, well, here, actually here we're, we're calculating the latency um, and then passing it to this on max function, the handler. And then if, if it's larger, then we're invoking this um, action on the right. And in this case, what it's doing is saving uh, a bunch of fields from the the sched, the sched switch event in uh, in, in variable associated with that uh, entry. So um, if we do that, and then we look at the output, um, if we look at the the, uh, the sched switch event, this is where we attach the on max uh, uh, handler. We see it's it's telling us the maximum so far is 67. And when that maximum was hit, here are the variable, the values of the variables that we asked it to save. Um, and it presumably, we're, we're telling it to save variables that will help us um, determine the source of, let's say, a high latency. Um, you might want to look at uh, the, previous, the previous process and its uh, priority and help you. Maybe there's something going on with that particular process that you can then go take a look at. Um, so that's useful, but you can you can ask, you can actually um, do much more than that. You can chain handlers of basically where we're adding we can add in more handlers of the same type on top of it and do get even more information. Um, so for example, uh, another thing we could do is use the same handler, uh, add another instance of the same handler on max whenever we hit the same maximum, and do this action. Um, in this case, this action represents a snapshot. So the idea is that you're running your workload and um, and you, 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 you enable a bunch of events that are uh, pertinent to your, what you expect to, uh, pertinent to your, uh, uh, your application and basically, or, or all events in the system. And when you hit that maximum, um, uh, it'll, it'll uh, in addition to, to saving those values told to, it also take a snapshot. So then you can go look at the snapshot and, um, It'll give you a wealth of information. In addition, you know, 
the saving stuff is great, but having basically the whole state of the system in the, in the snapshot buffer is infinitely more um, useful for digging into the problem. Um, so here, here's what it looks like in terms of the trigger. All we did here was add another on max handler, and um, in addition to the save, we're doing the snapshot. And uh, looking at the output of that, we see in this case, um, same thing, we have a, a maximum latency, we have our um, variables that we saved, and we also have another max that corresponds to the snapshot, which isn't here, but um, if you look in the tracing snapshot, um, if you look at the snapshot using this tracing snapshot file, you will see um, that your snapshot data. So in this case, um, here we have our SCED switch. This is what actually triggered the snapshot. And um, the corresponding SCED wake up is here. And if you add, if you subtract these two, you'll, you'll see exactly um, the max that was reported by the latency, which is uh, 99 in this case. Um, okay, so, so, that's, uh, so that's a lot of useful information about one particular latency. So we have, uh, the, we have, we have the, the, this data we've saved and we've had a snapshot um, uh, for one particular latency, the maximum latency, but really what we want in addition is to be able to do something with every single ma uh, latency that we see. Um, so we can, we can add a handler um, to do that as well. Um, in this case, it's, it's called, uh, it's, uh, the name of it is the onMatch handler, so there's a match there. Um, so, but, but the idea is basically every time you have a match um, between um, your events, and um, in this case, we're generating latency from that match. Um, every time we have a match, then do this action on the right. And in this case, th this action is, uh, supposed to, is meant to represent uh, another new functionality added by the patch set, which is, uh, a user generated synthetic event. So we're gonna create, basically we're gonna, we're gonna have this create a, a, a user, create a, a, an event of our own design and it's, we've designed it to, con, to contain the, latent, the latency. So, um, so whenever we have a match, we have it generate that a user, uh, our custom uh, event. And um, you can see here, it's, it's, it goes into the buffer a uh, trace buffer just like any other event. And, um, and uh, but what's important about that is b because it's an it's actual bona fide event, uh, we can apply all the machinery uh, that we can um, to that event as we do to any other event, such as uh, create a histogram, for instance. Or we can take snapshots or uh, say whatever. Uh, so in terms, of, in terms of the triggers, it looks like this. Um, the first line, uh, the first line is how we actually go about creating our synthetic event. Um, there's a file. This file is synthetic events. Um, you just all you need to do is e it's pretty simple. You just echo the uh, uh, a description of the event, um, which is just the name of the event and a set of fields and their types. Um, and then once you've done that, you end up with a, a synthetic event, an event here under the synthetic subsystem um, with the name that you gave it. Um, so now we can use those in our trigger, and basically all we do is add this on match, which just says, okay, whenever we have a match, whenever we, uh, we have a match with the SCED waking event, um, generate, uh, do the action on the right, which is generate a synthetic event, and this is the, synt the syntax for generating a synth at a synthetic event. Um, you, you, you just use, it's like a function call. Um, it's modeled after a function call. You just use the, um, the name of the event, and then um, pass it the parameters, and those parameters will fill in um, the, the fields of the event. So here we have um, our, waking, our waking latency uh, um, uh, variable. We're passing it in as the first, and that gets assigned to their lat. And then the same thing, we have uh, the PID here, where it gets, that gets assigned to that. Um, and then finally, now we, that we have um, a new event, we can do whatever we would do with any other event, and we can do the same thing as put a, a, a histogram on, on that event, and we can see, then we'll be able to see the um, distribution of latencies through the histogram. So that's basically just a simple histogram uh, definition on our new event. And when we look at the output, we get 
similar kind of thing. We still have on Mac, so that's there, 97 in this case, and, our, and the things we saved. Um, and then we also have the snapshot still around, so here's the snapshot, and we can see that the very last thing in there is our, our uh, custom event, uh, waking latency, containing our, um, our maximum latency, just as we would expect. And of course, these should match up too, they do. And finally, um, uh, here's the output of the histogram that we put on our new custom event. And so here we have a distribution of latencies. And um, down here we have our, as we would expect, the biggest uh, latency we have has already been flagged by the snapshot and the, the save. Um, okay, so, um, so everything that I've talked about so far has, is, is part of the inner event patch set. Um, with the exception of the snapshot, that's something I added. Um, um, I have, a, have that as a follow-on patch set, which I haven't posted yet. Um, but it is available in, in the last slide. I have a, a pointer to the Git repository. Um, it has all the code that I use to generate these um, examples, and it has snapshots and, and the stuff I'll be talking about um, for the rest of the talk um, in there as well. So, um, you can, you can look at that if you're interested in, in playing around with it. Um, so object latencies, uh, in, in some cases, uh, you know, it, in some cases it makes sense, it's more natural to use like an, an object, uh, address of an object as a key for, um, uh, for the latency uh, calculations. So for the histogram, we can use, using a, a, an, object, uh, uh, an object address for, for those, um, for the key. Um, um, an example is in the uh, networking subsystem, um, you have, uh, if you look at the events uh, in the networking sub subsystem, a lot of them have um, an actual SKB address as one of the fields in the event. And that's, that makes a nice uh, histogram key for us to use to um, essentially think of it as, uh, as uh, uh, you know, latency with reference to that particular object. Um, and if you also think of it, as, if, you set, if you set up a, a series of latencies I'm using that address. It's sort of like tracking um, that particular object through the kernel um, and 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 calculating and seeing its latencies. Um, so yeah. Um, hardware? No, it's all software. So, yeah, this is the trace event subsystem. It's um, it's available just by uh, turning the some kernel options on and you'll have trace events for um, any, anywhere in the kernel that defines a trace point. If you have the hard, obviously they're not gonna trigger unless you have the hardware for, you know, in a driver or something, but. Um, Uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, that sounds kind of advanced to, I don't know, chain them that way. Um, we can talk about it. I mean, I, I don't really understand the... Um, okay. Yeah, so they... But for the latency, they, you, you use that SKB and then you, you discard it and then it goes to the next guy, right? Right. So, but, but uh, yeah. So you're saying you could end up with a situation where you, you put the, you, you get the first part of the latency and then you miss the second part and then you come back with the, the first part again? Or you add more events to the same line. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure. That's, yeah, I mean, this is an example. I, I'm not a networking guy, so um, I'm, I'm assuming that you have an SKB address, and then um, you, know, you have the two events on the address on, on that, and then um, you, you, uh, you'll, you'll get the first event, and then at some point later you get the second one before uh, 
you know, before it gets recycled. So I'm not really. Okay. Okay, so the, yeah, in this case, I'm using I'm using NetDev Start Transmit and NetDev, NetDev Transmit um, using the SKB address, and so this is what it looks like. And using the SKB addresses, um, it's just uh, similar to what we've seen before, creating the two triggers and then generating the uh, uh, synthetic latency, the synthetic event using using the result of that, um, and then you'll end up with something like this. Um, um, which works initially, and uh, uh, then it will stop working because we're using an address as a key, and there's nothing freeing the address once we're done with the latency. So, uh, so what, ha what, ends up, what ends up happening is that um, we fill up the hash table, fill up the histogram with uh, with object addresses, and then uh, since no since not, you know we've finished the latency, nothing removes them, um, we end up overflowing the table, and we see. We start dropping events, and once we start dropping events, uh, we're, we're pretty much hosed because we're not doing latencies anymore, and there's no way to get the space back. Um, so the solution to that is to add um, a delete operation. And basically, the, the, trace, the, the histograms are, are uh, based on uh, uh, the tracing map, and the tracing map doesn't have a delete. Um, it, it didn't have a delete until um, uh, a colleague of mine at Intel, Vidan Patel, added uh, the, the delete operation to the tracing map. Uh, so once we had that, then we added a, uh, a delete hist trigger action uh, to take advantage of that. Um, and the the the, uh, the the delete the the delete actually use, requires um, a new a new facility, um, really simple thing uh, called tags. It just basically allows you to tag a histogram with a name, say tag equals xxx whatever your name is. Um, and the idea behind it is that you know you you essentially for, for every 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 trigger that participates in in the uh, latency you, you tag it with this tag, and then once um, once the uh, uh, once latency has been calculated, um, it will go ahead and delete its entry in, t in the table along with all the other uh, matching entries in the other tag tables. So you, you're now freeing up the, basically those slot slots for um, the next. Uh, object that comes along, SKB or whatever. Um, so, and a nice side effect of having these tags is you, you don't have to use them for delete. You can use them for, you can just give any any set of uh, triggers a, a tag, um, and then you can remove them all at once um, uh, by using this a new remove all command that I added uh, to do that. So you can just remove them all at once instead of one by one like you, you pretty much have to now. Um, so, and this here is just an example of of of, uh, of how that's of using that. So we're just tagging these two uh, triggers with that, with exmit tag, and then um, at, on, on the last one, we um, invoke delete transmit, and that will cause uh, that entry to be freed up when we're done with the latency calculation. Um, and then here's just an example of the remove all. Again, we're referencing the tag, and um, and and then executing that on um, on one of the hist one of the triggers, um, and it doesn't matter which trigger you use; it'll it'll uh, it'll go through and find all the other events with the same uh, tag and, and remove them. Um, and here's the result: it's just you look at the histogram. One of the histograms you see. Um, you see it's empty, completely empty, even though we've had five hits. I mean, and the reason it's empty is because we also had five deletes. So it works. Don't you lose histograms? And you delete stuff before you read it. Yeah, but in this case, it's kind of being not used as something to look at. It's being something used to track. You know, we're, we're interested in the output of the latency oh. and the other histogram. These ones that are we're putting you know, we're using to calculate latency, we don't care about. So we just look at it, but I just looked at it to verify that, that it was actually empty and stuff was getting deleted. Um, so that's, uh, that's one example. Um, and just one more example, it's a very similar thing. Um, 
with the block layer instead. Um, so I just kind of wanted to give some, you know, some idea of how you might go about um, using this stuff to uh, sort of track down a cause, the cause of a latency possibly, um, like sort of the process you go about, one process you might use to go about doing that. Um, and in this case, the block layer. Um, so basically assuming that you, you, you have some problem that you suspect is, is, is caused by um, uh, some latency problem in the block layer, like you know, maybe you're reading files and every once in a while you just stall for a really long time, no apparent reason, which I've seen uh, plenty of times before um, and would like to look into it. But um, so that's the kind of thing is, uh, if we run across something like that, we wanna look for uh, latencies to, track, uh, to possibly track it down. Um, one way to do that is um, to write a simple script like this, and it just it just uh, uh, it, it just uh, um, ex executes the workload, and before it, uh, before it does that, it turns tracing on, then turns tracing off, and um, and uh, enables uh, those those events which we think um, which are a good starting point, I guess, for uh, tracing the block layer. I mean, this is just it's just called f trace me block or trace me block, and it's based on one of Steve Rostad's uh, examples in one of his articles. So it's, it's really just a simple uh, script. And um, so looking at the output, you know, the idea is what you wanna do is try to find a couple of events that, could be, that, are, uh, that might be good candidates for uh, hanging latency calculations off of. And um, looking through them, you, uh, these two kind of uh, are, look like good examples, block RQ issue and block RQ complete. Um, so if we go and look at those, uh, look at those events. Um, it's a block RQ issue, for example. Um, there doesn't really seem to be that anything uh, that's really directly applicable to using as a key for a histogram. Um, not like uh, the network, the networking layer they actually gave us an SKB address of an object to use as, uh, uh, as part of the event. Um, but that doesn't mean all is lost because um, we also know that if we have Given any function in the in the kernel, we can actually um, create a, a trace a, create a trace event that uh, pretty much exports any kind of any data uh, we want um, from uh, at, at at the point that it's called. Um, for instance, using uh, kprobe events, uh, for instance. Um, so, so then I get so you know and. You know, the fact is that we did find a couple of events that were that were at good points in time to, to hang your latency off. It just happens that um, that for our purposes, we they, we just don't they they just didn't give us the data that we exact data that we that we really want. Um, so basically, the problem transfers over to finding some functions uh, nearby the trace points that we like um, that we can use for a similar purpose um, and. Um, and, and, and to do that, we can just add uh, this line to this, the previous script, which is turning on the function graph. And then when we look at the output, we will see um, see our original trace points that we're interested in, but we can we also see a, a graph, a function uh, call graph um, surrounding those, and that we can sort of try to pick and choose some things that might work. Uh, and this is this is the kind of output, uh, typical output you see. So. Here we have a block RQ issue that we're interested in, block RQ complete, and um, looking around, certain, looking around those two uh, events in the output, we see a couple candidates: um, block MQ start request and block account IO complete IO completion. So let's pretend that we want to use those uh, for uh, our trace events. So. Um, if we look at the look at the the source code, the, the kernel source, that we look at those two functions, and they do both of them have this struct request uh, uh, object that looks perfect for our purposes. Um, so now we have the function and we have the data that we want uh, to export as a as a, uh, a trace event. Um, there's a number, like I mentioned, you can use the K probe events to do that. Um, the syntax is a little um, off-putting, I guess. Um, and it's architect arch specific. Um, a similar uh, equivalent way of, of, of creating uh, trace points uh, for those functions would be perf probe. You could do that, the same thing, um, giving it the, um, uh, those functions. Um, but for, uh, for the purposes of this uh, talk, I'm gonna be using 
uh, Steve Russ's function event, new function event patch set that he posted a, a few weeks ago. Um, and the idea behind it is basically that you could take you know, very easily any function in the kernel and just directly create a trace point uh, for it with, uh, uh, with all the parameters and uh, with all the parameters of the event. Um, in addition to a whole lot else, a whole lot more, you can, you, can, uh, uh, you can go through structures, you can do global events and so on, but this is just um, using it to, to basically export um, uh, one, uh, one of the parameters. So if you do that, um, so yeah, anyways, the, yeah, to, to do that, basically you, you just, you, you, uh, you uh, echo the, the name of the function and the parameter you want into the, this function events file, and then um, you'll end up with uh, an event like this. And you can see it's, um, it's uh, the name of the function, and it, it's under this fun the function subsystem, and um, here's our request object that we were interested in. Okay, um, yeah, so anyway, this is, this is just the same, along the same theme. Uh, we have our triggers, we have, now we have our, our request object that we can use as the, as the um, key, and you know, we're just creating a, a synthetic event and then creating, generating histogram from that, and so here we have our output of um, request latency between those two functions that we just picked out. Um, so, you know, basically having, having this ability to, you know, at will create a, a trace event at any function, um, basically, we, we, you know, very easily do that with any, exporting any data we need, um, allows us to go from a situation um, like this where we have just a, a handful of, uh, of available trace points that may or may not have the data we need to this where we, we essentially, um, can, can very easily calculate the, the, uh, the latencies and show histogram between any two functions in the kernel um, if we, uh, uh, just by doing a similar process to what I did. Um, and in fact, this is, this is kind of a, an initial stab, it's kind of a toy script um, that, that, that tries to do that. Um, it's, uh, it's called func event latency, you just hand it two functions and a key, and it will generate um, everything, all the machinery needed to uh, create a histogram between those two functions. So here it, it does, it, it takes the, the function names and makes a function, and, and makes function events out of them. Um, and then it, it creates two triggers, you know, that save the, the latency and then calculate the latency here, um, keyed on the key. And, um, and then finally, um, it, it, also, it also creates a synthetic event named that, funclat, and, um, uh, and generates and uses onmatch to generate a synthetic event with that latency. And then now that we have an event with that latency, we can just put the histogram on it. And um, just like here on the um, synthetic uh, event that we created for it. And, Exactly. Yeah. Like I said, it was a, it's a toy program at this point. You know, you'd have to be, you know, you'd have you'd be much smarter about matching things up and, you know, uh, you know, with the parameters here, first parameter and the second parameter on the other one, or maybe it's it's you know some other uh, variable in a structure somewhere. But you know, it's uh, yeah, you, someone who's better at shell programming could, you know, do uh, do it justice. But I, I, that's just sort of. Um, illustrating the, the basic uh, potential of the thing, I think. So do we need any of those custom patches you mentioned earlier, or is that just part of the, the um, Yeah, you need, 
so to do, to, to do this, you need, you basically, what, what I did was I, I took my, I took the, uh, I, I took the, the inner event patches that I posted, I put them on top of Steve's um, function patch, uh, function event patch set, and then I, I added on top of that these other changes that I'm talking about. And um, so eventually they'll all get mixed, they'll all get unmixed, but for now, you know, they're available in that Git repository. I, I put everything in there. Um, I know, you know, when everything is go upstream, then it'll get sorted out, but for now, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you, I'll, on the last slide, I, a couple slides from now actually, I have, a, I have a, a Git repo that has all the stuff and uh, you can actually just go get the slides from the ELC website and then just directly go to it. So anyway, that's, so, th so this is, so this is the, this is the uh, end result is you have this funk event latency um, a, a, a script and in one line you, you've, you, uh, you basically created this latency and because you have, it's actually a, a latency that are actually um, fully fledged events, you can do all the other things with it as well, um, not just create this histogram. So yeah, so anyway, this is the, the, the two functions I gave it, the request and um, at, after you run this uh, one line, you end up with the histogram that you look at and that's the output, just like um, all the previous examples. So yeah, that's, um, that's all I had. Uh, then here's, the, here's the, a link to the, to the code. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for attending and I, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Pardon? Um, sure. Oh, the slides? Yeah. There, there, if you go, yeah, if you go to uh, my slot on the schedule for this, for, for ELC, you'll, you should be able to just go get the slides there. They're on there. And I didn't put my email here, so in case that doesn't work, you could email me, but you can just look for the patches and, okay. Any other questions? Um, well, I, this is just all right there. You're at the command line and you have it available. And, you know, it's not meant to, it's not supposed to be like, replay, uh, you know, something that would be um, like really in competition with. In fact, one of the th things I was gonna do for this talk that I didn't have time to do um, was actually, um, you know, BCC uh, is a tool that uses BPF and it has some examples similar to these. What I was gonna do was take uh, basically try to, uh, you know, um, plug this into, into BCC that you, so that you could, you could actually um, make use of, of this as a component uh, instead of 
uh, you know, calling, you know, creating the BPF program and then all that machinery. So um, it's not mutually exclusive, it's just, you know, and, you know, and, and one example, of, you know, like the block event layer, for instance, has a lot of stuff that, um, you know, we're never, we're, you know, you, like you have to write, you, you have to write a little code snippet to get the major and minor and things like that, which we don't have any way of doing that here, and I don't think we ever will, because that's basically uh, writing some code um, as part of the, the probe, and um, this is just kind of what you can wire up, you know, with just, uh, just wires instead of not logic. Or, I mean, not, not actual. Uh, also, just want to say, um, one of the focuses of that trace is basically we want it to work mostly on the only tools that are available that are digitized. You know, this being an embedded Linux conference, I think hopefully you appreciate that. Yeah. No? Any other questions? Yeah, I guess not. Well, thanks for attending.